What's up everyone, Eric here from Hardware for Gamers. Today I'm getting my Navi on with the Gigabyte RX 5600 XT Gaming OC. Now I'm going to be splitting the content for this card into three videos. This one, which is going to be about the more technical stuff, so I'm going to be taking a look at the cooler and how the GPU itself performs, as well as doing a teardown. I've already done the out-of-the-box gaming performance video, so you can take a look up here to get all that information. And finally, I'm going to be doing an overclocking video where I'm likely going to be taking a look at the BIOS and flashing the BIOS. But before that, I'm likely going to be doing a whole overclocking thing and seeing how far I can actually push it without changing the BIOS to then changing the BIOS and seeing how much of a difference there actually is. So this is going to be a pretty long video and I've got a lot to say, so let's get started. The Gigabyte RX 5600 XT Gaming OC Revision 1 is 280mm long by 115mm wide by 50mm deep. The Gaming OC has a metal backplate as well as an RGB LED logo on the side. There is only one 8-pin PCIe power connector. The RX 5600 XT is a Navi 10 GPU built on the TSMC 7 nanometer process. It has 36 compute units, 2304 stream processors, with a rated boost clock of 1620 megahertz and a rated game clock of 1560 megahertz. It has 6 gigs of GDDR6 memory clocked at 12,000 megahertz. Now this is what the Gigabyte website says, but depending on which BIOS you have on the card, your numbers may be different. My card came shipped with the F2 BIOS, which has a total graphics power or a TGP of 150 watts and has the memory clocked at 12,000 megahertz. Now flashing this card to the F3 BIOS would bring up the TGP to 180 watts and bring up the memory core clock to 14,000 megahertz. I'm gonna throw up all the graphs in just a second, but first the test bench. The CPU is the Ryzen 5 3600 overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz on all cores. The motherboard is the ASRock X470 Tai Chi. I had two 8 gig DIMMs of Corsair Vengeance 3600 overclocked to CL16. The CPU cooler is the Fractal Design Celsius S24. The power supply is the Corsair CS750M. The game drive is a Team Group 1TB SATA 3 SSD. The OS drive is a 250 gig Western Digital Blue SATA 3 M.2 SSD, and all tests were performed on an open air test bench. First up, the frequency chart, and this test was running Firestrike in a loop for 25 minutes. And yes, this chart is purposely zoomed in so we can actually see the changes in frequency. During the test, the frequencies would fluctuate between 1727 and 1738 megahertz, with the average being 1733. Next up, the power chart. So for the power limit, I ran two tests, Furmark. This is to see what the GPU's max power limit is. And again, Firestrike. And this is to see what the typical gaming load would be like. In the Furmark test, the minimum power draw was 137 watts. And the maximum was 146 watts, with the average working out to be about 140 watts. In the Firestrike test, the minimum power draw was 99 watts, with the maximum being at 133 watts, and the average worked out to be about 115 watts. Now for the temperature charts, all these temperatures were taken from a 25 minute run of Firestrike on a loop, so these temperatures will be more representative of gaming rather than a torture test. And again, just as a reminder, everything is in Celsius and shown as a Delta T. And as you can see, over all the tests, the temperatures were quite good. Now taking a look at the fan speed, the maximum fan speed had the fans running between 4400 and 4500 RPM. The 40 dBA test had the fans running between 2290 and 2325, with the auto fan profile ranging between 1200 and 1880 RPM. Now please note all noise tests were performed from 20 inches away. And with the test bench running, the noise floor was at 34 dBA. Running the fans at full speed was very loud with a result of 61 dBA. 
with the autofan profile peaking at 37.5 dBA. Now that's it for the charts. Now let's find out what makes this thing tick. So here we are. I'm gonna start off by it's taking off the back plate here. What are we looking at? So that's actually three, so I'm gonna have to take off, okay. so I can't take off the back like that, but let's take out these screws. So what I wanted to do is, what after taking it apart, I was going to, there we go, uh, repaste it and test the temperatures again. Uh, I think I'm just gonna be doing the probably nobody's normalized test because I don't really see a point in doing the auto because it's auto and then I guess it would well whatever it all depends on how the pads are placed and everything I was going to try to fix everything in air quotes don't really have air quotes because I'm using my hand right now but I'm hoping this should all go smoothly and shouldn't have much issue. Is there anything on the front end here? Nope, nothing attached there, so the cooler should just come off. and careful, don't want to break anything. It still feels like it's attached to something though. Hmm. Let's just flex that back a bit. Make sure it's not. It's definitely moving. There we go. Being held on by the thermal pads now I got thermal pads and fan header. Okay, I should unplug the fan header first. That was kind of stupid of me. fan headers. Well, I guess one's an RGB and then one's a fan, I take it. Or maybe they both are fans. Because one of the fans spins the other way. Um, so we'll figure out what these things are, where they go. Okay. Oh, dang it. That ripped. That's not good. I'm going to have to replace that. Shit. really stuck on there nice. Aha! Yep, I mangled. This thing is stuck on there real good. Wow. Never had a pad stick like that before. I had a magnet in here, what the heck? Son of a... Oh, there it is. So it is a stainless steel plate. 
which could maybe explain some of the memory temperature issues, or not issues, but it, the memory was certainly warmer than everything else. here, one screw here, and again on the other side. I think that's all that's holding together. Or holding the shroud on. holding you in. Nothing. Okay. Okay, so there's the three fans on the shroud, and then we got five heat pipes. I'm gonna get a pretty good look at that once I move my hands out of the way. It is pretty beefy. Um, That does not want to come off. Okay, so I'm, some people might have issue with this, but I'm just going to do it with the thermal pads still on there. So that's 464 grams, or about a pound, isn't it? Take two. Okay, so it cut out. So I took the extra pad off of the memory plate and then just kind of fudged it back in there so that should work without any issues should being the operative word uh, so next up I'm going to take off the back plate again because the thing stopped recording so there's four screws one two three and four Um, I guess I'm gonna have to check to see if I did I look at the fans first or did I Son of a bitch, why did that have to stop recording? Eh, anyways. And then well, let's keep going. back of the PP PCB and then the pads. So you do have four pads. And again, it is, yeah, this one isn't actually doing anything because there's no memory there. So it's just an extra pad. Sure, it's making contact with it. So it is, it will be taking something away from the PCB heat and spreading it through the back plate. 
Um, yeah, you got the back of the GPU there, which is nice to see. Good impressions, so it has excellent torque on it or pressure. Mounting pressure is very good. Uh, and again, this is aluminum, so it is definitely a heat spreader. Uh, we also have a anti-short thing for the back of the MOSFETs, the caps there. <sighs> so, it's a triple fan design. They are 80 millimeters. They're all three the same. Now, this one and this one spin that way and this one spins that way to then create some sort of movement of air through it that it's not just mass amounts of whatever stuck to it. Uh, we also have the RGB for the logo there and then the fan header. So the fan header, RGB header. We also actually have a third one there, which doesn't have anything for that. What is it being called up as? I don't see anything. Hmm. Maybe it's two RGB headers. Maybe on a higher end model, they have more RGB, so then it has a second illuminated area is what my guess would be. So all in all, I'm actually pretty happy with the build quality. They have the extra pads for the memory on both the front and back, even though there is no memory there, which indicates to me anyways, that it, this is the exact same thing for the 5600, but minus the actual memory modules. Uh, like the biggest issue I have is that this is stainless steel, which is certainly not a deal breaker by any means, but if it was aluminum or copper, it would likely work a lot better, which is probably why that the memory temperatures, they certainly weren't high, but they certainly weren't great. Uh, they were sufficient, which I guess is if they can save a couple of bucks per card and they're selling tens of thousands of cards, they just sold or saved tens of thousands of dollars. That's the choice that Gigabyte made. And it seems to be okay for what they've created. Everything else, all the pads are well placed. All the pads are have good mounting. Uh, it's really just to the point of like it, it, if the actual components are faulty or not, but the actual build quality of the card seems to be quite good overall. So I'm just gonna clean this thing up and then put it back together and then do the outro. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're still watching, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. And I've also made up a Discord server, so you can check the description below for the link for that. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.